Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are going to be talking about the philosophy of Black Mirror with our special guest, Dr. David Kyle Johnson, a professor of philosophy at King's College. David, welcome. How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on. You got it, hey. man. We've done a couple of panels with you uh, on the philosophy of Star Wars and Star Trek, and um, you are a philosopher. I, and <clears throat> if people couldn't tell by your nerd cave that you're <laughs> ensconced into over there, yeah, yeah uh, you are a philosopher who is who likes to to dovetail in the philosophy of of, of nerdy genres, science like, fiction, yeah, science fiction, and you're you're the this is your latest book. The one that's coming out soon is The Philosophy of Black Mirror. Uh, yeah, actually, the book is already out uh, on Amazon or wherever else you buy your books. Uh, Black Mirror and Philosophy, uh, ready to go. Awesome. So uh, in preparation for this, we rewatched the San Junipero episode, which is one yeah. of the better episodes. I mean, they're all great. I actually like all the episodes of, it, of Black Mirror. It didn't have a dark ending. It didn't. It, well, it's, you know... it. It's true. It had the best ending I think it could have. It was supposed to have a bad ending, but in the writing, was it what's his name, uh, Brooker? Brooker. He, uh, yeah, he he decided to give it a, a happy ending. That's that's fine. That's good. Yeah, but it, you know, it is like how much of a happy ending can you have uh, in that episode? But let's talk. Tell, give us a summary sure. of the episode. Uh, yeah. Kind of so, and one of one of the issues is whether or not it actually is a happy ending, yeah. right? So. Uh, so it's a set in a world like you're introduced to this uh, this young character um, who is running around and um, in like the 80s. And you're kind of wondering whether it's a time travel story or something like that. Uh, she ends up meeting another girl uh, in in that world. And then you uh, you end up realizing that what's going on is it's an it's an afterlife of sorts. So we're mm -hmm. in an advanced society where uh, people can upload copies of their consciousness into this world, San Junipero, um, and live uh, as, as, like, if you're alive and well, you can live as a tourist for a few hours a week, essentially, in San Junipero and kind of experience whatever time period uh, you like. And it turns out that uh, you also, when you die, you have the option of uploading your entire consciousness into San Junipero permanently and kind of living in whatever era uh, you like. It turns out a lot of the tourists are elderly people in, like, you know, um, in uh, nursing homes mm -hmm. uh, who are doing, I think they called it uh, nostalgia regression therapy or something like that, right? <laughs> they're yeah. going back and living their, you know, they're living their, their young lives. Um, and so you have uh, Yorkie and Kelly. Yorkie's the, 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 the character that we first meet and then she, she falls in love with Kelly. Um, Yorkie, it turns out, was paralyzed most of her life. And so uh, she's been a tourist in this her entire life, but she plans to upload once she dies. Uh, and then Kelly is elderly as well. And she eventually decides to upload at the end. But like the 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 conflict comes when uh, after Kelly dies, um, excuse me, after Yorkie dies, Kelly's not quite sure she actually wants to upload full time. Um because she kind of sees it as somewhat of a meaningless existence. Uh, one of the things that you see in the episode is a lot of people who are permanent residents end up in this thing called the quagmire, which is basically just like a sex rave club. And that's all they do all the time. Um, but then in the, and then one of the arguments that Kelly gives is about this, uh, like, you know, she had a real, she lived her life with her husband and a daughter who died early and it was very traumatic or whatever. And her daughter didn't get to upload and her husband didn't upload. And so she doesn't feel that she should upload either. But in the end, she goes back on that and decides yeah. to upload, and you see them, you know, kind of sail off uh, in their convertible, as it were, uh, at the end, uh, supposedly happily ever after, right? Uh, but one of the things that the uh, the book does, so in the book, we have a chapter for every episode mm -hmm. of the series, mm -hmm. and one of the questions of that chapter, is it really a happy ending? Because a lot of people said exactly what you said. It seems to be so unlike Black Mirror because it actually has a happy ending but it's debatable as to whether or not it actually is a happy ending it kind of raising the question of whether you really would want to upload into something like San Junipero. All right, well, let's get, let's get into it then. So the idea here that we're, we're going to discuss is of one of many, there's lots yeah. of different things going on here, but one of them is, you know, <coughs> could you, could you as a human being have a meaningful existence living in a 100% computer generated reality mm -hmm. where, as you put it, earlier, Steve, the stakes are zero. The stakes are zero, yeah. So, yeah, you can't die. Your quality of life is whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, the only real variable in a world like that is because there's other actual people there. 
is your relationships. And I think that that's how I interpret the ending uh, is that Kelly decided that her relationship with Yorkie was enough mm-hmm. of a justification for doing it. And, and even though there is nothing else, right? There are no other stakes. Uh, and so that, of course, and, they, and of course there's um, allusions to heaven throughout the episode, uh, including yep. the song, you know, by the, the go Heaven is a place on earth. Yeah, heaven is a place on earth. Uh, that, and because we had these conversations before Black Mirror about why would you want to go to heaven and what do you do? Spend the rest of your life sitting around, you know? Uh, again, it's like in heaven, what are the stakes? What, what's your purpose? What do you do? It's just an eternity of just like this monotone bliss of worship, of worshiping or whatever. Yeah, I get that. But I mean, I think there was a very interesting lesson in this episode because you're, we did get to see people who had. Mm-hmm quote unquote meaningless existences. You know, you mm-hmm. have people that are like in a rave club for right. weeks, months on end. That's that's pretty meaningless. Um, but their relationship had real teeth. Yeah. Even you know, right. even whether or not they were in a physical body or if they were in a virtual mm-hmm. environment, I mean there there is something to be said about real love, real affection, real care. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, and I look at my life, I mean, you know, science fiction Again, you know, even like Black Mirror, the name of the, the show, it, it's supposed to make you think about yourself. Yeah. Um, and the episodes, are, a lot of them do that. And this episode is one of them. You know, what's your life? What's the value in your life? Yeah. Is it is it really important that you... It's all meaning and illusion anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> if you're a nihilist, you, you believe that ultimately there is no meaning other than the meaning that you, you try to shoehorn into right. the, the short time that you have. Um but I mean, my relationships and like the things I look forward to the most in my life are spending time with mm-hmm. people. I mean, I like to play Minecraft too, but you could do that in this computer well, simulation. I mean, the, Minecraft is actually a good example of why I think it might be possible to make this work. So, uh, because we do play video games where the stakes are zero mm-hmm. in your in terms of real life, but we sort of buy into the stakes of the game. Right. Right. And, and they get, the game gives us the illusion of purpose, the illusion of accomplishment, right? The illusion of stakes. And that's, you know, it's entertaining at least. It's sort of good enough for a while yeah. until that, you get bored and you go on to the next game. Well, that's the yeah, crux. So, that's the crux, a, yeah. a while. Now, you, there's different ways to look at this. Mm-hmm. There's different ways to look at this. You say there's no risk. Sure, there's risk. There are hardware. There's risk all the time. I work with computers every day. There's lots of risk let alone a new. Nothing you so, have control over that. Right, yeah, fine. Because you're in the system. The only risk yeah. is outside the system. There, well, I would think that they'd be able to communicate outside the system. I mean, it, that seems pretty obvious yeah. that, that you'd have well, some sort they, of feedback. The tourists, they, they can communicate with the tourists who come in and into the world, right? right? So yeah. there's a little bit so, of a contact on the outside. But yeah. then the other, the other side of that coin is e- eternity, true eternity. If we're talking true eternity, I would say that the human mind is incompatible, incompatible with, yeah. with eternity. You will, you cannot, you will, I think, eventually go mad unless there's safeguards in the system mm-hmm. um, that will prevent that from happening, like selective delete, deletions. And well, she's like that, which they know. did mention. So you could turn yourself off whenever you want to. It's not, yeah, so it's that's, not permanent. That, well, opting out, that's that's a that's you a good out. that's a good option. Which as makes well. it better than heaven. Can you opt out of heaven? I don't I doubt it. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, Bob. Uh, but yeah, right. Like you can't opt out of actual heaven, right? Like it right. is just kind of eternal by default, right? So James Cook, who's the author of the chapter in the book, points out that like some people would say that you would want to upload to San Junipero because like for the same reason you wouldn't really want to go to heaven because eternity would eventually become torture. But he points out, like Steve did, that it's, it's San Junipero is not actually eternal. You can opt out, right? One of the other problems is that like for the same reason you wouldn't want to uh, upload into Nozick's experience machine because nothing in it is actually real, you wouldn't want to upload to San Junipero. But again, a, uh, an important difference is that in San Junipero you have real people. In Nozick's experience machine, everything yeah. is not simulated, right? right. Is, is, is everything is simulated, right? But what Cook argues is it's the no stakes problem and it's the no stakes inside the world that you can't die, you can't reproduce, you can't procreate. He's very skeptical about Yorkie and uh, Yorkie oh. and Kelly's relationship uh, in the long term mm-hmm. because there are no stakes to the relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Like because they can't die, because they can't have offspring, because there's no struggles, because there's there's no kind of obstacles to overcome, there's nothing really to hold that relationship together. Uh, and so they may have fun for a little bit, but eventually it will dissolve because there are, there are no stakes. Until so to use uh, uh, to use Steve's analogy, right? Uh, it is a bit like a video game, but think about how 
tiresome it becomes to play a video game in God mode. Mm-hmm. Right? Like yes, how quick yes. it just becomes like, I don't care. Like there's no challenge. There's literally, I mean, yeah. there's no stakes to begin with, right? But if you're in God mode, there's completely nothing, right? And it's not fun at all because there's no actual obstacles. That's the kind of worry that Cook has about San Junipero. Because yeah. there's no obstacles, it becomes completely meaningless and not even able to keep a relationship. Okay, and I, I agree with the idea. I mean, anybody that's played any video game in God mode knows after a while, the charm does wear off. And then you're, you're just kind of looking at, well, is there success without the possibility of failure? But, but I, I would know. say, though, under the auspice of this particular episode, um, there's a lot of things that we don't know the answers to that we have to just say, well, if the answer is this, then you know, there's a different outcome than if the answer is something else. Now, I would think in, in that simulation, um, you know, when you say there's no stakes, we're just assuming that you know, we know that you can't die. We know that you can't actually get hurt. We know that you can turn the pain off. Remember that, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. She says that you can you know, lower your pain mm-hmm. down and whatever. But, you know, why would they make the simulation? Because it isn't heaven. It is mm-hmm. actually terrestrial, and it is still run by right. and created by humans, or even if it's artificial intelligences. You could say, hey, I would like a real adventure or a struggle. Exactly. Or- so, and that's where, I was, that's where I think where the episode... Uh, lacked a little bit of imagination, which is a, you know I- interesting to say about a Black Mirror, is that they right. really gave us just a very uh, limited view of what San Junipero could be. Right. It's just, it's right. a party, right? Here you go. It's a party. Do whatever you want. It's a beach. Yeah, you're at the, party. the beach. You're at a party. You're on vacation. Permanently on vacation. Permanently on vacation is hell. That's not. Yeah. That's not heaven. And I agree. If I were designing the afterlife, digital afterlife there would be competition, Mm -hmm. right? Like think of how into sports people are. What are the real world stakes of sports? Zero. At one point when (laughs) when, um, the the Patriots, which is my football team, they lost the, of having a perfect season by the most ridiculous catch you could possibly imagine. It was a tragic end to an otherwise glorious season of football. I had to remind myself, the stakes for me are actually zero. <laughs> yeah. They are zero, zero, zero. Yes. This matters not one bit to my world, to my life. But I had to like consciously remind myself because you because th- you invest, you buy into it, you buy into it, yep. you invest in your your team winning mm-hmm. for nothing. Like you have no actual stakes there. So I think creating the illusion of purpose of competition. I just say. Craft adventures for people. Have teams. Sure. Make you know what I mean. I could do, you know, do a lifetime building a civilization, even though it's all digital. Or, or you could make people busy. You can't just be a party and a rave all the time. Right. Or That's how about just learning? How about mastering? I loved. I uh, can't talk about uh, the, the, the good place. <laughs> this guy didn't see the damn end of it. But We're uh, not going to spoil a separate genre. Yes, but it, but it, it ties into this thing beautifully. So I won't say anything. I guess. Well, all right, no, all right. I, I got a few things to is, say. The point is, though, I, I totally understand the perspective here, and yeah, like for geeks like us that would like to to live in a D and D world for a little while, yeah. and write a D and D world for other people, you know, there could be a lot of cross pollination. You had creativity, right? You got yeah. creativity. You had learning. My God, think of the things you can learn. But what you say that there's no stakes. What about stakes with other relationships? You could yeah. you could screw up your relationships and you could lose somebody you love forever of course. because you're such yeah. a jerk. That's a big that's a yeah, big Yeah, but stake. you know what most people fight about in relationships? Money. It's things that are practical like right. money okay. and stuff that's which fine. without the without the real world stakes, what's the relationship stakes? I guess it's just loyalty and cheating or whatever. But would you care as much about that if you have forever and Again, it's not like you're going to bring home a disease or something. Yeah. I mean, again, right. I think yeah. and would that, everyone that's just be like easy, the quagmire. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, easy I, going polyamorous in a right. world like Kyle, that? Kyle, I, I would what? end my relationships if somebody voted for somebody that I didn't like But is there intensely. voting? Is there voting? <laughs> yeah. And Kyle, Whatever, one thing yeah. I wanted to ask you, because you've, <laughs> yeah, spent, you've spent more time with this episode than I have. You know, they did very much leave out like this two-way communication between being in the simulation and not, right? But yeah. I, I kept thinking, you know, there's a lot of people in this simulation and, you know, some of them have to have extreme yeah. talents. What if an artist was in there and, and right. they're painting and then he, they're like, wow, this is the best piece of artwork I've ever made. You know, sell it. You could sell well, it. Well, not that. It's not the money. It's more of like sharing it with, you know, there's the humanity that's in the system and yeah. there's the humanity right. that's out in meat space. And I right. wish, 
uh, you know, you, again, like produce a song, like somebody could write a song inside this inside would, the apparel, would, right? and then you can people can enjoy it in the outside world. Would an economy develop within the absolutely, world? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh my God, probably. It, it, There's so endless. much to talk about here. It, it's you know, I, I want to scratch the. They didn't even scratch the surface. They did, yeah. they looked at the surface. They, yeah, but they, I think they, <laughs> they, they they threw a few photons at the. But surface. the point is. Because they're they're trying to address particular questions, right? They're not yeah. talking because we're we're really tripping out on the whole thing because it really is yeah. like you know. Well, that's what's good about the episodes is that you there's more to talk about when the episode's over. Yeah, of course. Right. That's why yeah. Black Mirror right. is such a brilliant show. Obviously, in a one hour show, they can't they can only very superficially address right, this right. issue. Although I thought they did a good job of weaving in a lot of different concepts, and then it leaves you to think about the implications yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. Endlessly. That's why they're so good. So, Kyle, let me ask yeah. you a question. Do we even yeah. have to look at this episode like it, it's either you're dead forever or you're in eternity, right? Which, of course, implies forever. Like, what if you just want to go into the simulation for a couple hundred years? Yeah, right? I could do that. Yeah, yeah. It's totally possible. That's totally possible because you can opt out at any time, right? Yeah. Uh, and I, so I think that the like Brooker and, and in, in the fictional world, the creators of San Junipero, San Junipero realize that eternity would become torture. And so they give you that out and you could right now cook the author of the chapter kind of thinks that that even that wouldn't be good um that like uh we, we should just kind of like accept our mortality as it stands and like uh how long our life is and that's good enough we wouldn't want to extend it um, i yeah, disagree I, I think that i i would totally take a couple hundred years in san junipero uh yeah, and then not? you know with especially the with the possibilities out. especially with the yeah, possibilities but, oh god i mean just on rewatching my favorite films and TV shows alone. That's a lifetime. Yep. You know, like yeah, I the books. Some of the books you, you will never yeah, read. I mean, how a, about you can go into space? Yeah. You could be a not human. You could, you want to be an eagle for a, a, a couple of years? Here you go. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, the, the, and you are, it is or, a completely different right. realm of existence and life that you could explore as a digital entity. Right. And then, and you might be able to get 10,000 years out of that before you get bored. I love, if, if you had the real right. cost, not uh, as a rave well, how about, the whole time. Right, but, right which, is, which is kind of ridiculous when you yeah. think about it. Jay and I would talk about this growing up. We'd imagine you have, you live your life, you grow up, you live your life, you have relationships, you end your life, and when your life, when you die, after you die, you wake up. Jay and I talk, imagine this, like, imagine you wake up and like, and you got, you're in some technosphere of awesome technology, and it's like, that was awesome, let's do another one. Yeah. Like, a, a, yeah. an entire like life Roy, is something uh, yeah, that yeah. Rick and Morty. An entire life that <laughs> yeah, was, that that's was, a Rick and that, Morty that episode, you just yeah. lived through in real time, and then you do another one. Imagine living the life <laughs> Of, um, of 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 all these diff yeah. different people from different yeah. cultures, I think and that th that ties into another science fiction short story I listened to. That was wonderful. This guy blew up a planet. He's like a really evil dude. He blew up a planet. Yeah. So some some like like Supreme Court of the universe caught him and said and made him live the entire life of everyone that was on that planet, one after the other after the other for oh, cool. bill billions of people. That was his oh. punishment. And every and he didn't know he it was the punishment until he woke up in between lives. He'd wake up. And go increasingly more insane with each life. He'd be more and oh more insane. Oh my god, that's, that's that is but, horrifying. Awesome story. So I think I think this idea that you know we we bring meaning to our own lives, right? There are people that are living in misery because of um, happenstance, mm -hmm. disease, and whatever, or they they just didn't have the the luck of running into other people that they can you know friends right. mm -hmm. you know friends and people that they can relate to, or they didn't get they were unlucky and didn't get an education and never got a leg up or whatever, right? But, you know, I'd like to think for the most part, people can and do have this opportunity to bring meaning yeah. into their life. I, you know, we fight to bring meaning into our lives all the time. You know, I, I, there are yeah. things that are like so important to me that I focus on, but that, that to me <coughs> is, is a good takeaway from this episode is that you, you're not going to have a meaningful life even even the high stakes life, the way you're putting it, Steve, like that we're all living right now, we're all going to die. Everyone that we know is going to die. Everything that we love and cherish is one day not going to exist anymore. Hold on, like, you know, to bring it into the into this show, like our the genres we love. Someday a human being is going to exist and probably no one not know anything that Star Wars or, or Star Trek ever existed or any of the science fiction that's going on mm -hmm. in our lives yeah, right now, right? Sure. Um, so the point is, if everything is is ultimately ephemeral. Mm -hmm. then, yeah, it is all about the relationships and the meaning yeah. that we bring to it. Well, so, yeah, my thought on that is, so meaning is ultimately subjective and uh, relative in terms of its magnitude, right? So, like, we we feel, I feel like our lives have meaning, but 
we're not struggling for our very survival every day. Other people might think that our lives are superficial and shallow. And cushy, yeah. And cushy, because we're not struggling to build an empire or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? We're not fighting a rebellion. Um, and so, and, and, and we look at like our kids who get incredibly invested and upset over things that we know are teeny tiny <laughs> yeah. infinitesimal yeah. stakes, but it's all relative. So I think that the, the, the take home is that if you're going to have a simulation, you have to simulate meaning as well. Mm -hmm. And you can do that because it's all subjective anyway. Right. Right. I agree. Yeah. Yep. So they, they just didn't do. A, they just didn't do a good job in no, <laughs> simulating no, no, meaning. No, no, I don't, I don't think that, that was the purpose of the episode. I exactly. Agree. But this is right, the conversation like, yeah. it's, it spawns, right? Yeah. It's like in, in yeah. that slice that we saw, that was missing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's really common for Black Mirror to do. They'll just give you a little snippet of some technology, yeah. not flesh out all the details, give you the basics, and they'll you know they'll tell you the story, and you'll wonder about the story, but then you'll also be thinking in terms of like what else would this imply what else is true in this yeah, like with the God. with uh, you know with the the grain uh, the entire history of you and they have the grain that records everything right and they can play it back yeah. there's all kinds of things so, that you yeah, can explore what if that right? were true yeah that's like that's what again, my favorite is in is the white christmas episode where they they basically clone your mind and your mind runs the software in your house and you're like this slave yeah. mind but yeah. you're you're you you're still you and the best was when the, the slave mind was booted up and and wasn't it's like I'm not going to run the house what are you talking about and you guys okay hits a button and he waits 20 seconds six months go by inside and when, when he turns it back on she's like I'll do whatever you want please don't leave me alone yeah, just give again. me something to do that, just give me something to do was, right yep. so that hit me so hard yeah. like oh my god can you imagine that yeah so I, I again this TV show always gives me a little bit of a panic attack when I watch it, <laughs> which is it good. It's good. That's hard to write. That's hard to produce. Oh, a, man. You know, for, for a director to get a script and go, okay, and, and make it happen where I'm like, oh, God, there's something inherently yeah. uncomfortable. Like, that's hard to do, and I'm really impressed with this TV show. And they keep doing it. Like, this is the show. How many seasons do we have now, Kyle? Uh, it's in the fifth season. It's in the fifth season, and then there's the Christmas special, and then there's Bandersnatch, and then five seasons around that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I give um, them kudos for that. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's still limited. I mean, five seasons, but how many episodes? Like three or four episodes. Yeah, season. there's not that many overall episodes. Oh, it's it's uh, three, three, six, and six. There's okay. um, three, three, six, six, and three. Yeah. Actually, the first season was three, and the second season was three. The next two were six, and the last season they, was three. They should take episodes and then do a spinoff, a spinoff episode using in the same universe, the same world. Well, a lot of them are they, kind of in the same universe. They have the same Kind tech, of. Like, like, for example, the, the example I... I always think back is that is the White Christmas episode. You have a clone of your mind that can that can will do. You can make them do whatever you want. But if you could make six months pass in one minute, imagine if you cloned a genius twenty times and say, "Here, solve this problem," and come back in a minute, and they've spent six well, months. What, what kind of show would I that mean, be? I mean, the ramifications. I mean, that's fun to talk about, but that's not a that, you know. The, sure, I, I could build a nice story around that. That's a cool idea. All right, but, but I think well, I'm going to back well, up a little bit because what that episode and this episode have in common. It's like the heaven and hell version of a digital existence. If you are a digital entity, mm -hmm. right, then yes, life could be absolutely amazing because you could live in a digital world, but it could also be unimaginable torture right. because you could be trapped in a digital world yeah. the right. same way. So right. let's talk about, let's shift over to the idea of could this even happen? Could this work? Could this work? Yeah. You know, so the, the premise here is that you know, you're seeing, as an example, you're seeing Yorkie lying on her deathbed and the, you know, the, the chemical that they're going to inject into her is going to kill her. And I, and seemingly from her perspective, she just, pay, she, you know, yeah. she didn't miss a beat in the yeah. simulated reality. So the question is, is it really mm -hmm. her? And by what we learned in this particular show, I would say no, mm -hmm. because, you know, again, there wasn't a slow transition of like, you know, your meat co-joined with a computer you know, slowly digitize and, you know, and that type of thing. It was literally like just a copy of her. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I feel right. that if, you know, if you don't understand the idea of uh, continuity, of the continuity of how, how important it is that, you know, you have continuity with your, the meat, which is your brain. Yeah, um, the physical continuity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about copying a file on a computer at that point. Yeah. It's, it's, there's right. no difference. It's, you, yeah. From your point of view, well, you're, you're dead. But the important angle, though, is that from the point of view of family and friends, it's you with essentially that, negligible difference. That's the important? No, no, that's, I mean, it's it's not good for me, but I would do it anyway because for family and friends, even though I'd be pissed 
that I that I w- couldn't. Don't worry, be, Bob. I've already me. made a copy of you that's ready to go <laughs> if we need you. So, but, but yeah, you're right. Continuity is critical because yeah. you're well, you're dead otherwise. For what it's worth, uh, philosophers like Derek Derek Parfit would say that personal identity doesn't exist at yeah. all. Anyway, like when Yorkie wakes up the next morning after being euthanized, that's not her, but it's just as much her as you are the next morning when you wake up, right? Like right. Parfit doesn't think that you should really concern yourself with personal identity over time or whether or not you're the same person over time. What you should really care about is whether or not like your current wants and goals and desires and that kind of stuff are, there's, there's someone that will care about those things in the future. Kyle, and what so do you from, think about like, that? Yeah, so I am, I'm in this, I'm a nihilist about most things. So I, 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 I don't think that there's anything as, as, as objective meaning. Like you guys are talking about, I'm a subjectivist about meaning. Uh, I don't think that free will exists. I'm a nihilist about free will. And push me philosophically, I'm a nihilist about persons too. I really don't think that persons have any kind of objective ontological standpoint uh, kind of with Hume on this or the Buddha's kind of uh, talks about uh, talks about this, that really it's just a collection of perceptions that we bind together and think of as an object, but it's not really any kind of separately existing object. The fun part, of course, is just like with free will and personal identity, philosophically, I can accept that and acknowledge that that's where the arguments point to, and that's where the evidence seems to suggest. But in my day-to-day life, I can't help but yeah. believe that I have free will and that I am a person, right? But yeah, as if. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. also you have a will to live and, you know, yeah, you know totally. having a desire to not die. You know, I think, I think the one thing that philosophy has, has taught me well is the understanding of I'm going to perish, right? I'm going to die and there's nothing I can do about it. And that steel door at the end of my existence, I want to extend that. I want to push that, that, that moment as far away from the now as I possibly can. Sure. And, you know, and we also know that how fantastically long the universe has existed and how much longer it's going to exist. So you it's know, a blip anyway. It's, everything's a blip anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, why can't, why shouldn't humans esteem to live a thousand, a thousand years or 5,000 years? You know, yeah. we can go to other planets. It'll can, happen eventually. Right, exactly. So I, I look at the whole thing like philosophically, it, it, it's very hard for me to accept and emotionally, it's very hard for me to accept what Kyle's saying, even though, you know, as a, a is it a nihilist or nihilist? Uh, um, either one, either one works. Either, either. So as a, as a narcissist, <laughs> I, I, it's funny, I'll, I'll even say that, as, you know, with the little bit of narcissism that most normal people have, I don't want to die. Yeah, sure. and, and I don't care that I don't know. But your desire not to die is just an illusion, Jay. Well, whatever. I let me ride the illusion, you know. <laughs> yeah. But the 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 idea being that um, it shouldn't be a dirty a dirty thing or a, a, to yeah. look down on someone saying, you know, eighty years is just not enough for me. Well, I think Yorkie makes this point, and I think you know, she was paralyzed at twenty one. She didn't really have a life, right? And, and so this was her chance to have not an extended life, but a, a life, life. Yeah, yeah, you know, and so right. that. That's and important, that, but you could say, "Hey, twenty-one. That was that's not bad. It's twenty-one years." But right. We look at that as like, twenty-one years is not enough, but we may look back and say eighty years isn't enough. Right. Again, it's all subjective. Definitely. Right, that's and subjective. it also this also ties into um, a chunk of the episode that they that the Brooker was it Brooker right? Uh, he wanted yeah, he about. wanted to have a scene where where one of the one of the main characters goes to a school and sees like five, a whole bunch of five year olds in school because they died they died young at that mm-hmm. age and Brooker's like nah it's just too it's, it's too emotional too poignant it's too dark uh, and he, yeah and he, and he took it out but that would have been an interesting mm-hmm. scene as well yeah yeah and like you know they said another thing that I, I, that was kind of haunting me a little is that their daughter died at thirty nine right right you know, Kelly and her husband's daughter died it's like oh damn so like they're not backing everybody up. You know, in this universe, yeah, no, well, yeah. Yeah, right? we don't know what the technology is to, because yeah, you said you said that she she transitioned seamlessly. I would argue against that because when you're visiting San Junipero, you're you're hooked up and your brain, your meat, your meat, yeah. your brain is what's operating the software. When you transition, it's not your brain anymore. Uh, you know, unless they yeah. took her brain out and put it in the machine, which I doubt that they. I know, they but they, 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 I, get they the idea that they're, they're you know while you're, you're an AI at that point. There's there's a, there, when you're hooked up to that thing, they're slowly engineering you in the machine you know that they have to be because it's not like you can transmit all the information that's in the human brain no, in yeah. a nanosecond and the, the, when you're a visitor they are making your ai yeah it's got to be yeah. Pro- yeah. That, it's got to be that that'd way, be yeah. a great way for that to happen but i'm telling yeah. you man like that i always i have to make this point several times whenever we t- talk about yeah. continuity that woman died in that hospital yeah. bed and there's a there's a simulation of her running in that self-deluded imposter yeah. 
but, it does, um, but it does, which is basically her. It's not what the story was about, though. But it is right, a fun right. thing. It is a fun thing to uh, to talk about. I would so say this. In conclusion, there's no meaning. No, <laughs> no. We, in conclusion, philosophy. Is, we, Thank bring, you. Like, <laughs> we bring we bring the meaning. A meaningless can be fun. We bring the meaning that we want. It reminds me of the artist Salvador Dali. This was really weird. It was like 1939, I think, and he was at a yeah. film festival, <laughs> and he was watching a film. And then he became enraged and he knocked the projector over and he started freaking out. And he said, the, the guy who wrote this film stole those thoughts out of my mind. Because <laughs> at the time, now correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but at the time, I don't think people really understood that you can't have thoughts stolen from you. Like, it's not like they stole paper. Like, he thought the guy read his mind. Mm -hmm. I just found that, I find that yeah. to be so bizarre, you know, but, to, but I'm, that's bizarre to a guy that's living in 2020. You know, going oh, back. He, did he have mental illness? Because that sounds a little. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but also, you know, I, what I was tripping out on when I read that was he, he didn't read. Like, we're like so into fantasy and science fiction. Like, we understand these concepts. We also understand you can't pluck thoughts out of somebody's mind. Like, we mm -hmm. know that. Did people in the 30s know that the way we know it today? I, I doubt it. I doubt that people. They didn't understand the brain. Who's like, they? You know, did, did modern science and your average person? Yeah, I think person, so. I think they, well, they, then he was they, nuts. Okay, yeah, then he was nuts. <laughs> but I was reading it. Uh, going, the average, the average person might not have. Of course, no, there's I, average people today that still think that you can pluck yeah. thoughts out of people's minds. But yeah. to bring it back around, uh, of course, you all know if we're talking about a meaningless existence, it's not completely meaningless because we there is an answer. Forty-two, 42. of course. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, to but to to, to bring it about uh, to a little plug or whatever, uh, I have another course with the great courses called the Big Questions of Philosophy, uh, and it all culminates in a last lecture in the thirty-sixth lecture where I talk about the meaning of life and I use the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy to talk about the meaning of life mm -hmm. and what it means to say it's 42 and all that kind of stuff or whatever. And I come to some of the same conclusions that we've, we've talked about here in terms of like making your own meaning because it's subjective. But um, if you're more interested in a kind of a full exploration of that topic, you can check, check that out. Steve's got a copy because the last time I saw him, yeah. I gave, I gave him I a do. copy of, of, of that course. So Kyle, where can people get your book? Uh, so Amazon or anywhere you buy books, uh, you can find uh, the Black Mirror and philosophy book. It is available now. Um, my great courses are, of course, on uh, thegreatcourses.com. You can do the audio download, uh, the video upload, or whatever. Um, uh, do the video. I've got, I have really nice outfits in my, <laughs> my <laughs> Speaking of, show us your tie. Show us your tie. Guys. Oh, yes. yes, yes so, and this, this, oh, this yes. This is my experience in the sci fi course. Wow. This, that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, but I, I go to a lot of effort to make sure I have a unique outfit for every lecture when I do great That's courses. Awesome, man. Um, but uh, yeah, and of course, a really great, good way to do that is to get the uh, Great Courses Plus app. Mm -hmm. And uh, both the Big Questions of Philosophy and my other course, Sci-Fi, Science Fiction as Philosophy, which there's a copy of it back there somewhere. Um, Sci-Fi, Science Fiction as Philosophy is, is on there. It's 24 lectures. It is really fun. I'm very, very proud of it. Uh, talk about Black Mirror, talk about all, all different kinds of stuff. So anyway, uh, yeah, there you go. Awesome. Well, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, you can go to alpha quadrant and number six.com. You can check out our videos. We're uploading more podcast episodes right now. We're going to really be hitting that hard. So a lot of people have been asking, so you're we're giving you what you want. And if you'd like to become a patron of ours, you can go to patreon.com forward slash alpha quadrant and the number six to help us keep this show going and to help Kyle prepare his next suit for his next great courses lecture. Of course. <laughs> <laughs>